Good day everybody, good to be alive again and to be able to share again and to commune with all of you in the presence of Yahweh. And we're going to have a great time together and God's going to be glorified because it's such an amazing season and such an amazing time. And I want to share some more with you today about the glory of Yahweh. And this will be our last Sunday live session for this year. As on next Sunday, I'm going on holiday to take a bit of a break. And then when we enter in the new year, um, we're going to go for it. We're going to have an amazing time next year as well. So I want to share with you the glory of God. And in the last few weeks, I would say, especially the last week, he started speaking to me more and more about the latter glory. And this is so important when we look at the glory of Yahweh and what is available to us and what is there for us to live out of. And I want to read for you Haggai 2 verse 9. It says, the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. And this is, um, this is so amazing. That's actually mind-blowing. If you think about it, that it says, the glory will be greater than the former. And if we just go back to, um, let's say to, Deuteronomy 5, where God speaks to Israel, He speaks to Moses and all of them about the temple and about the former glory and, and what He's going to be and how He's going to reveal the glory. And it is just amazing to think how God has chosen us for this time and season. And I want to tell us, we are living in the time of the greater glory, the latter glory. And in the last few days, there was a transition taking place. There was a shift in the spirit taking place on the 30th of November into the 1st of December. And what the Lord showed me, it is a glory shift. It's a release that's taking place. It's a repositioning that is taking place of man into the door of God, where glory and the door of God became one. So it becomes like a where you enter into the Holy of Holies. And what is available now to us is not only to be the, the doorway of the Holy of Holies, but to be the manifestation of what is inside. And this is where we need to function and to work from what is inside of us. Bring it from the inside out because it's already in you. It's just for Yahweh to shine His light on it, to make you aware of Him. But that awareness and that light can only come to you when you are positioned in a desire and intimacy to be able to reveal it. And we in this time, and what the Lord showed me, He said, I'm taking December to prepare the people for the release from the 1st of January. So there's already a release of glory. We are always seated in glory and everything, but there's a greater release coming, the latter glory. And that the Lord said, tell the people it is time to exercise the hosting and to release the spread, the steward and the administration of the glory of Yahweh. So what do you need to do? We need to step into that place where we really practice to host God. And wherever we go, we need to release it. But this is a glory. This is a consuming fire. This is love that we're not just going to release in a normal way. This is that you literally sit with an expectation to become glorified, to become light, to become the revelation because God wants to release, release himself and reveal himself through you and I, through man. And, and this is so important when 
when God says this latter glory, he's talking about his eternal splendor and majesty that he wants to release, the, the perfection of his glory. It's not just a measure of glory. That's his eternal perfected glory that he wants to release through you and man, through you and, 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 and him. And man is created to partake and honor God in his glory. So what happens now when we look at the world and the darkness and everything going on, God wants to use you and I to reveal the external splendor and majesty of him, to bring the world back in awe and amazement in this time and season. And what does he say? He says, the latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. So what do we need to do? If we look at what's happening, just look at Israel and, and, and what's going there on with Hamas and Palestine and all those places. If we want peace there, we need to release glory because the birthing seed of glory is perfect love and glory becomes a consuming fire that overcomes all and listen here you and i have been chosen to reveal it and to be that perfect love so that we can have peace all over the earth and what happens this big thing there is don't go and look from it from the outside Come back to inside of you. And what does God move, um, talk about when he talks about the latter glory and about the temple? We all know that he referred here to the temple of Solomon and everything where the glory of Solomon and the house of Solomon was so amazing and everything. And But the Lord says that this is an even a greater glory that's going to come. And what happens, and he says here in Haggai 2, um, verse, from verse 6, he says, For thus says the Lord of hope, yet once more, in a little while, while I will shake the heavens and the earth and the sea and the dry land. And I truly believe we in that shaking, what happened there, there's a shaking happening now because there's a desperation in Yahweh to bring peace on the earth, to come and reunite everything into him in oneness. There's a desperation, there's a cry of Yahweh for the sons of God to rise up in the glory that what he wants to reveal, that splendor, the eternal glory, not in the glory that Moses and them had in that time. Yes, Moses' glory was amazing, and if we read about it, he, he stood between God and the nation that Israel was in fear. They did not want to come up to the mountain because of the glory of Yahweh, the voice of Yahweh. But Moses had the ability, because of his love and intimacy, to step into that glory, he had a desire to behold it because he had a desire to save a nation, to set a nation free. You see, and that is so important as well, so that the latter glory of the latter house, if we want that fold in, in fire and in power, you need to have a desire for creation. You need to have a desperation to bring peace on the earth. You need to have a desperation to create a metamorphosis of creation, to bring it back into its previous form of existence, um, where existence started, where God created it into perfection and glory, to bring that back, that a metamorphosis of creation takes place, and that creation gets brought back into all amazement and praise and worship. People, it's inside of you. They said, I will shake, and there's a shaking going wrong. And the reality is, when you and I step into this place of glory, we will cause everything to get shaken. And the shaking is so important because shaking reveals 
all dimensions of existence and of creation. It reveals light, it reveals darkness. And you and I have to come and shine the light on the darkness so that it can be exposed and that it can bring in people's lives salvation. Glory is a weapon in creation. And it says, all nations shall come in and I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, declares the Lord of hosts. The latter glory of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give peace, declares the Lord of hosts. So I want to go further. Now Moses had the ability to reveal the glory of Christ. We know that he came down the mountain, he had to put a veil in front of his face because people could see glory and they got afraid. But I want to read for you quickly out of the, on the Passion Translation, Ephesians 2 from verse 19. So you are not foreigners or guests, but rather you are the children of the city of the Holy Ones with all the rights as family members of the household of God. So what is a declaration that it comes? You are not a guest. You are children of the city of the Holy One. So what it actually declares is you are children of glory because God's city is the new Jerusalem on Mount Zion. And that you are part. That's a glorified city in perfection. And what it is, you are rising like the perfect stone of the temple and your lives are being built up together upon the ideal foundations um, laid by the apostles and prophets. And best of all, you are connected to the head cornerstone of the building, the anointed one, Jesus Christ himself. So what does he say? You have become one with glory, because who is glory? What is glory? Yahweh. Glory is not just an event. Glory is not just when we got golden flakes on us. Glory is the fullness and the manifestation to full the fullness and the splendor and the majesty of the Godhead three and one, the person, the being, Yahweh. And it says now, this entire building is under construction and is continually growing under his supervision until it rises up, completed as the holy temple of the Lord himself. This means that God is transforming each one of you into the holy of holies, his dwelling place through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you. That is, I hope, I want you to go and meditate on this, that God is creating, transforming each one of you into the Holy of Holies. Remember what he says, you are a temple of God. A temple carries the Holy of Holies. A temple carries the Ark of the Covenant. The temple car carries the glorified one, the exalted one, in its perfected form, in its majesty, in its splendor, in its power and authority. And this should bring you into a place. It should shift you into such a position of honor and glorifying and awe and amazement to realize that you and I right here on the earth has got the ability not just to reveal Christ, but to reveal Him as in the Holy of Holies. That is His eternal highest honor, highest power, highest form that could ever be imagined. That is where His fullness is hosted and out of where creation takes place. You see, and that's what we need to do. We need to be so intimate with Him. We need to step into and behold the glory of Yahweh in such a manner and a place that we create, partake with Him in this glory out of everything, out of majesty out of perfection. 
People, I want you to realize where you become this holy of holies. You've got an influence on creation. You've got an influence on everything, each and every second. You are bringing transformation. You are bringing things back to glory, even because it's a spiritual manifestation first. Then only it manifests in the natural. You see, when we start living in this dimension and the realization that we've already been given it, everything will change in your life. You need to have such a desire each and every moment to become that glory. And, and it must always be, the desire must always be birthed out of love and to glorify Him. To glorify Fy him. I'm not shy to say it. I try every day of my life. I sit and I try to get transfigured. I exercise and sometimes it happens. Sometimes not. I'll walk in daytimes and gold will come over me sometimes, sometimes not. Even my clothes turns into gold and people see it. As gold does comes over. That is great. That is me. But is it to glorify Him and to honor Him? God wants to release the latter glory right now. And are you available to do it? Because what He told me is that my glory will be revealed in such a way and a dimension which creation has not seen until now. Not even in the biblical times, not even what Moses and them saw. It's a much greater glory. Remember, God moves from glory to glory. When you're in intimacy with Him, you move from glory to glory. So the dimensions that Moses and all Elijah and all of them had has been amazing and great and we honor it. But what's available to you and I right now is even much greater. People, how much do you love God? Because according to your love, will you release His glory. That's the, according to your intimacy, according to your knowledge of Him, is the measure of glory that you will be releasing. You see, and what I believe, what the Lord showed me in this time and season with the latter glory as well is, that it will be the fulfillment of, of the Melchizedek order that will manifest out of the Holy of Holies. You must remember, you and I must remember that Melchizedek order, the king and the priest coming together, comes into its fulfillment and perfection in the Holy of Holies. There's a participation, there's a unity, there's a oneness in this order that there is no separation. And the Lord took me in the spirit to the Holy of Holies in a heavenly dimension to show me what it is. And he showed me the Melchizedek order. And there is no separation. There's no, not even a, a mark or a, a seam where it's been reunited. You just, show, you, you just saw one great glory, flame, fire. I, don't, I can't even describe it. You are dumbstruck. You can't even move. You just gaze upon it. And the fear of the Lord consumes you when you realize it's available to you. And that you can manifest it right now. Glory and blessing will be bigger than all previous generations. Where there's glory and blessing, it means, the Lord said, with the latter glory, is that whatever has been released on all previous generations, He told me, He said, Etienne, take all the generations' blessings before you, and what has been prophesied and promised in the future, and bring it all into the now. That is what's available to us, all of us, right now. It will be better than every generation has ever had. Now, if you just take your own bloodline, how many generations of your bloodline is there 
from Adam. And if you just take that, what each generation had as a blessing, you take all of it together. Imagine what you've got now. Just take the generation, the promises of what God gave to Abram, Isaac, and Jacob, to Moses, to Israel, and what he spoke upon the nations. That is available to you now. And that is the latter glory. You see, and if we look at the first temple, the temple of Solomon, and the great temple that everybody acknowledged as the greatest temple ever, your glory, your temple inside of you is much greater than that. And the question is right now, are we revealing the latter glory, the glory inside of us, the Holy of Holy to people? Do people recognize it from within us when we commune with them? That is so, so important. I want to go with you um, to Job. Let's go to Job 8, verse 7. And it says, And though your beginning was small, your latter days will be very great. And now, you remember, this is Job and them speaking. And we know what Job went through. And he went through small things. Although he was rich and everything, where turmoils um, came over him, sickness and pain and hurt and everything. He started small. But what does he say? Your latter days will be very great. And we are moving into the season of the latter days right now. We are in that season right now. So what does God say? Stop looking at the past. Don't look at the past. Look at now what you can behold now because the glory of Yahweh, the latter glory is available right now and it can be released. In Ephesians 3 verse 21 and out of the Amplified it says, To Him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And you are the church. I am the church. So what do we need to do? We need to bring glory into us. And we need to glorify Him. The glory is unto Him and not unto ourselves. People, I want you to be so truthful to yourself. And ask yourself the question, what I am doing, what I'm desiring of Christ, is it to glorify Him? Or is it for my own self to get recognition? Or to be remired, um, not remired, um, forget about that. Or is it to be affirmed, admired, sorry, admired by people, or to be affirmed by people? And I think all of us, come on, let's be blunt and truthful and honest. All of us has been there at one stage of our lives, that we seek recognition from God and from people especially and we pursued I know in the, when you, I was a young Christian you pursued the glory of God you want all the things you want to be translated transported transfigured everything so that you could tell the people what you are doing and what's happening in you but was it truly about him you see, and this glory, this eternal glory, this latter glory in us, must be positioned for Him for all ages. I, there's just a, a repositioning, I would say, that needs to take place in all of our hearts. And, We need to come back to oneness with glory. We need to come back where he gets honored and praised. And what latter also means, it's the more recently. There's that that which come after, and it's after salvation. 
You see, the latter glory that's going to be released is going to contribute to all the prophecies of the billions of souls that's going to come into the kingdom. And you and I have got the ability, each of us, to bring in a, billions of, a billion of souls by just revealing the Holy of Holies, the glory of God, His majesty and His eternal splendor from inside of us. That our testimonies will reach the out ends of the nations, of the world and creation. You see where the latter glory, as the Lord showed me, is where the sons of God is going to walk in such a way, it's going to cause such a metamorphosis, such a um, transformation, that even the earth will respond, creation will respond, the plants, the animals, everything, and some of them will actually turn into gold. The same what we see, how we get gold coming on to us, that that is going to be the cause, that's going to be the reaction, the manifestation, where the true sons of God walking in the greater majesty, the greater glory of God, is going to have that effect on creation. It's going to bring it back into in a greater measure than what Adam and Eve had. And what brings latter glory? And we all know the first one is Matthew 22, um, verse 37. I'm going to go through, you, through a few things. What, what do we need to do to bring in this latter glory? And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. It is repositioning him, in, him as first love, and that's a surrender to him, body, soul, and spirit. But the surrender is not um, just surrendering. It's more a desire. It's where you come to him and say, Lord, I give you my body, soul, and spirit so that you can live from within me outside to the outside. That everything will about you. I am prepared to lay down everything because it's all about my first love. I don't care if I don't get seen anymore. But as long as you get seen. And then if um, intimacy is the second one. It's about relationship. It's about exactly what we've read. Ephesians 2 verse 18 to 22 where you are part of his household, that there's no separation between you and the Holy of Holies, that the Holy of Holies becomes a knowing place, a awareness of you constantly of the glory of Yahweh. Remember, the glory of Yahweh is the perfection of the sound, the frequency and vibration of the heart of the Father that is love, that is fire, that is transformation and its authority because it comes, um, it overcomes everything. So intimacy is so important. And this, especially in this month, December, as I said, the Lord said, tell the people to exercise it. We've got a, a time of grace, I would call it. That God comes and exercise that knowing awareness of me, how to host me. So you walk intentionally to release the glory of God. Not just, I want to be as that people be aware of His presence, but that I want intentionally be and reveal the glory of Yahweh. Then, in Psalm 63, let's go to Psalm 63, verse 6. It says, When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you on the watches of the night, for you have been my help in the shadow of your wings, and I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. You see, if we want to step in this glory, Meditation is so important. Psalm 77. Let's go. Psalm 77, verse 6. 
it says. I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent service. You see, this is all about meditation. Meditation and prayer. Meditation and prayer is communing with God. It's communing on the deeper things. It's, it's getting the revelation of His desires and His heart. And it says, let me remember my song in the night. What is it? Every one of us have got a song inside of us. We've got a sound, a frequency, and vibration. Your DNA has scientifically been proven. It's got a sound of a philharmonic orchestra playing in you. And when you meditate, when you release that sound, you are releasing glory because your sound that God has given you has got a sound of creation in perfection to create in the with the ability to create it in the latter glory, the, the splendor of Yahweh. So prayer communication, two-way communication, meditation, that is so important for this time and season. It's communing with God. It's hosting God. It's, it's really honoring. And remember, prayer and meditation is honoring God. It's treasuring what He's given you, and you are talking with Him, discussing it with Him. So important. And then let's go to Romans 12. We all know Romans 12 verse 1. The next thing that we need to bring, what brings the latter glory is, I appeal to you therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Are we truly living sacrifices? Where you basically come and say, Lord, I give you my mind so that I can have your mind, your ways, your plans. I give you my eyes, my ears, my mouth that I can see through your eyes, that I can hear through your ears, that your words will be my words. I give you your, my heart that I traded for your heart so that I can have your mind but most of all that I can live from the perfect love that it's inside of you. I give you my hands, which is your works. So Lord, are my works that I'm doing must only be works that's in obedience to your commandments, what you command me to do, to your instruction. I give you my feet, Father, that I can only walk in your ways, that my feet can only step into your feet. You see, that's a living sacrifice where you literally are prepared or desire to give everything of yourself and trade it for what God wants. That you can only do to something and somebody that you truly love. And then the next thing what brings latter glory is when we start and really look into the covenant of God. Genesis 15 and Genesis 17. 15. Let's just go quickly to Genesis 15 verse. I'm just going to touch on that. Verse 1 it says, After these things the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. And it says, Fear not, Abram, I'm your shield. Your reward shall be very great. Now I want you to remember this. What we are living out of now, the privilege and the honor of the latter glory, is some of the rewards that are manifesting because of Abram. Because of the promise upon Abram that the rewards said that he could not live in his life will manifest. What did the Lord say? I bless your Generations to come, your children's children, thousands of generations. I bless them. So there's always an increase. There's always a greater reward. And if we are right now, that's a thing for us as well, living in alignment with Yahweh right now, the reward might manifest on our children, our children's children, for all generations into eternity. 
that Genesis um, 15 verse 1, and let's just go quickly to verse 18. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your offspring, what is your offspring? There's an eternal offspring. I give this land from the river of the Egypt to the great river, the river Ephrates. And then it carries on with the love. And this is the promise of the covenant. To your offspring, I give everything. You know, Genesis 17, verse 1 to 10. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I'm God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, that I might make, might make my covenant between me and you and multiply you greatly. You see, and that's the thing. That's why we need to know what the covenant of Yahweh is to reveal the latter glory. He said, walk before me blamelessly, holy, everything, obedience, so that I can multiply you, I can bless you. You see, in this latter time of the latter glory, what it actually says, I'm going to allow you to be the full revelation of who I am. Behold, my covenant is with you, and you shall be the father of a multitude of nations. When God declared that upon Abram, he declared it upon you. And what happens? When you start revealing the latter glory, the fullness of God, believe me, Nations will come and submit under you. The earth will submit. Nature will submit. Creation will submit because creation is groaning. It's crying out for the sons of God, not only to reveal the Lord, but to reveal the latter glory, the highest dimension that you can get, the fullness of Christ. He said, no longer shall your name be called Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, because it refers to the multiplication. It refers to the enlargement, the expansion that it allows. The glory of Yahweh, this latter glory of Yahweh will cause an expansion and will be expansion of love, an expansion of peace, an expansion of praise and worship. Because all of creation was designed to praise and worship God. I just love this if I read it. For I've made you the father of a multitude of nations. I'll make you exceedingly fruitful and I'll make you into nations and kings shall come to you. You see this latitude of this latter glory that God has come means that you will become a fruit of life that will bear fruit as it says in Revelation that the tree of life on the river connected on both sides and it bears fruit every month. That means there's a constant flow of blessing coming out of you because you are in unity and oneness with the river, the Holy Spirit, and you will bear fruit and multiply and fill the earth. And what is the Lord said? I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your offspring after you. When God says, I have established it, it means nobody can take it away to all generations. This latter glory that God wants to release will be a repositioning into the covenant of God. There are so many, let's call it bloodlines, generations that have totally moved away from the covenant of Yahweh. And God comes now and said, if you in position, and you've repositioned yourself in the latter glory, you have got the ability to bring all generations back into perfection in the revelation and the blessing of the covenant. So go and meditate. It's much deeper. The next thing that we want to bring the latter glory is obedience. And there we know the two scriptures, Numbers 12 and Exodus 33, 
about Moses, where Moses was so obedient that he actually says, Moses, faithful, trustworthy. It means obedient, like no other on earth. When I, with him, I had a face-to-face -face and a mouth-to-mouth -mouth relationship. The latter glory is so important. It is in the latter glory. It is so important to have this face-to-face, mouth-to-mouth. And that happens in the Holy of Holies. Intimacy, prayer, and meditation. That's why prayer and meditation is so important, because it brings you face-to-face. -face. It means there's a constant transformation or transference from His mind into your mind, because your face is right next to His, to his face. It becomes one. So transformation or transference takes place all the time. Mouth to mouth means that he breathes in you all the time. And what happens? His words of power and glory and majesty and splendor and creation flows out of you all the time. What happens? I need to be obedient. To be able to step into that I mentioned. The next thing that we need to look at is holiness. 1 Corinthians 3 verse, 60, this, um, verse 16 to 19. Let's just read it. We know it's about the temple of God. Let's just go it. But there's something you need to know. Do you not know that you are God's temple and God's spirit dwells in you? You are God's holy of holies. He dwells in you. People, there's a difference by just going around and saying, I'm a temple of God. But is your temple hosting Him? Is there a realization in you that God lives in and through you? You see, only when you grasp that, you're going to step into the greater dimension of it. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. So when we walk in sinful lives and don't want to listen and, and do all the things of the world, God will destroy you. He'll allow you to get destroyed. God's temple is holy and you are the temple. Very important. Step into the dimension of the temple of Yahweh. People, I'm sitting here right now and I think the fear of the Lord is literally overcoming to think it's just a greater revelation coming to you. are hosting Him. And you see, you need to ask yourself the question right now. If God, if Yeshua had to walk into your room where you are right now in the natural, what would your response be? What will change? The reality is nothing should change because you are already hosting Him. You see, if we want to live in this latter glory, we need to realize who we are hosting, with whom we are walking. And that comes through intimacy, Relationship, prayer, meditation. The next thing that we need to look up is praise and worship. Psalm 63.3, love it says, Because your steadfast love, love is better than life, my lips will praise you. You see, it's a permanent positioning of praise and worship and your lifestyle is what praise and worship God I know in Colossians 3 17 to 21 1 Corinthians 10 it says do everything and paraphrasing as if it's Jesus doing it himself to glorify and to exalt, to exalt him praise and worship is your lifestyle it's not an event it's a permanent place of habitation where your body soul and spirit can't act differently but to praise and worship Him. To do everything in excellence with passion, with fire. 
You see, and that is true praise and with that spirit and truth. So when you're in intimacy and seeing his face all the time, the response of your body, soul and spirit is nothing more, nothing less than praise and worship. And when we walk in the latter glory and dimensions of Yahweh, it means that everything around us starts praying and worshipping, praising God, worshipping God, because it comes back into awe and amazement. Creation needs to come in the latter glory times. And it needs to host God. Not you and I only. We need to bring, create an atmosphere, a platform for Yahweh to manifest. So what happens? Where there's true praise and worship and spirit and truth, that platform will be created. The next thing is humility. And again, I'm not going to touch on that. Moses, it says, faithful, trustworthy, and humble like no others on earth. So there's already the, the manifestation of humility. Face to face, mouth to mouth with God. Where there's no humility, there's no manifestation. Humility is a key to have a throne room positioning where the reality of Yahweh is made clear to you, where He becomes a reality where you see Him all the time. It's when He is honored and glorified. When you submit everything about yourself, humility is submitting your plans, everything to Him. No fear. There is no fear <coughs> in the world. You can't reveal the latter glory if you've got fear. And fear is fear of finances, fear of failing. Fear of relationships. All those type of things. You can't reveal the latter glory. It means that you've got a lack of trust and a lack of intimacy and a lack of love in Yahweh. God can't trust you then to reveal His latter glory. The next thing what brings latter glory is ownership and responsibility. The Lord spoke to me a lot about that. He said, man needs to take ownership and responsibility of what I have given them. God has given you and I everything. He's given us all of creation. Have you taken ownership? It means, have you treasured it, brought it into your heart? And are you ruling and reigning over it? Have you taken responsibility? That you, 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 responsibility means is that you bring everything and create a place or reveal Yahweh to them that they will praise and worship God, that they'll come back from out of the sinful nature of the world because of Adam and Eve unto the, nat unto the nature of heaven, of the glory of Yahweh, as it is to heaven. Responsibility means an ownership that I'm taking ownership as a king and a priest in the order of Melchizedek and my desire and my passion is to bring it into the true state of creation in God's desire as it is in heaven. Nothing less, nothing more. You see, and this is where the fear of the Lord comes over us. But also, also the wrath of the Lord that you, you really feel pain, you feel hurt if you see what man does. To what God created and how man allowed darkness to come over the earth. How you, you get a holy anger in you when you see how people get robbed of the goodness of God because they allow their sinful nature to manifest in them. Or they allow other people to deceive them. This is so important, people, that we take on these things. What brings the latter glory, let me just go through it again, is first love, intimacy, 
prayer meditation, a living sacrifice, covenant of God, obedience, ownership and responsibility, holiness, praise and worship, humility and no fear. The latter rain also talks to what it actually means. It means it will be a new outpouring of His Spirit as in Acts 2. Latter rain means it's a new pour, the latter glory. It's a new outpouring of His Spirit as in Acts 2. And today when you and I read Acts 2, we're in awe and amazement and yeah, you get chills and you think how amazing and I wish I could have been there. But listen what I'm telling you now. With the latter glory coming out, inclusive of the latter rain that will be released, there's a greater outpouring, a greater manifestation. It's got to have a much greater and bigger influence than in that time. Why? Because you and I have got the ability with the later glory not only to touch a group of people in a house or in a temple, but when we step into the realm of the latter glory, the full expression of God in its fullness, it means that you touch and you release the glory of Yahweh in all nations at once. Listen, Lord, I want you to expand your way of thinking. You've got the ability right now to release the fire of God that was released, the presence of the Holy Spirit in Acts 2, in that community, in that room. But you've got the ability now to fill the earth to form a mantle, a blanket around the earth of glory by sitting there where you are right now. I want you to think about it. You've got that now. The, the, it is, everything is greater. Stop looking at the Bible and especially at the Old Testament and things, and think, wow, that was amazing. Yes, it was, and we'll always honor it. It's amazing. But realize what is available to you now, what was then is nothing comparing to what it's now. Don't try and be like what it was. You take the what was was, you take what is to come, and you've got the ability to bring it into the now. In Ephesians 3 verse 20, it says, Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. The latter glory is, him who is able to do far more abundantly than all we ask and think. It means that God's going to come and He's going to blow you away. According to the power at work within us. That power, that work within us, it's your responsibility to reveal it and release it. Stop waiting on the Lord. It's already within you. Stop asking the Lord to come and do everything. And what does He do if you step into the desire, that positioning, um, and when your whole life is positioned as Yahweh, as your first, on Yahweh, as your first love, God will always come and He will reveal Himself from within you far more abundantly than you could ever think of or expect of. God will always outgive you. Philippians 4 verse 26 
chasquete. To our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. So glory, the latter glory that's coming right now, is a eternal glory. And the thing is said to our God and Father, I ask you tonight, have you met him as God? Because that's a realm, that is a certain character nature. And have you met him and encountered him as Father? Because that is also a different realm and different characteristics. So if we want to step into the latter glory and the revelation of the latter glory, we need to get to know Him as our God, but also as our Father. People, I want to tell you, it is the greatest time of living ever in creation. Don't look in the natural. Look from within inside of you. Look at heaven. And look at what's been given to you. And start revealing it. I'll be honest, I don't think we know a drop in the ocean of who God is. But this is a time to pursue Him. Not to be selfish, to be surrendered to be radical, to pursue Him with every part of your being, with every part of your desire, and to reveal Him. It's all in you. It's your choice. And I want to tell you in this, as we end our Sunday life here, in this time and season, don't, like most people go on December holidays, it's like Jesus goes on holiday then in their lives as well. And then from the 1st of January, they will start pursuing. But I want to tell you now, the way that you exit the one year, and the way is the same way that you enter the next year. And that is the foundation of your year ahead. So God has spoken to us. He's given us revelation. He's given us instruction. So position yourself in this glory that the latter glory will be a reality in your life, in my life, wherever we go, and that we'll be known by people as the people of glory, the temples of God, the one that hosts the great I am, the burning ones. It's inside of you. So just go for it. I bless you with it. And may you encounter glory, the man Yahweh, like never before. He's waiting on you. He's right inside of you. He's above you. He's behind you. He's to your left, to your right. He's underneath you. You can't separate yourself from Him. But allow Him now to become your glory. And I bless you of that in the name of Yahweh. And on Wednesday, we're having our mentorship session again. But Sunday life, next year again. So may you have such a blessed time in the glory and the splendor and the majesty of Yahweh. Amen. Bless you.